Hi everyone, welcome back to my workshop. We have a locking compensated nut procedure that we're doing today. I start with this brass stock and I end up with this little strip that sits on the rosewood fingerboard and butts up tight against that locking nut. And you'll see when we're done there'll be different values cut for each string all the way across. And this Ibanez Joe Satriani will play 100% perfectly in tune. So that's how I set up on the tech deck because I do super glue that piece of brass to the rosewood and the locking nut. So we want that super glue to run downhill. That's why I orient the guitar like this during this job. Now the other guitar that we have in this is a beautiful Larave guitar and this is now a scalloped fingerboard and this was done by Mark Aitkinson in Oakville. This is the third guitar I've had come into my shop that was scalloped by Mark, a Les Paul, another Larave, and now this is the second Larave. Same customer. He's looking for a compensated nut, and he wants the string spacing brought in a little bit tighter. So there you go. That's what we got on the go today. These are the compensation values that I'm going to scratch into that brass nut to get it ready before we actually carve it out. So I've scribed a center line on this, on this uh, brass blank got that butted up against the actual locking nut, nut bed and then just with the tip of this file I'm just scribing a uh, center line for the strings now I'm scribing across that line to mark the values so the low E is four cents flat so we're moving it forward to compensate the A is five the D is six and then the G is eight cents flat. So what I mean by that eight cents flat is when you fret the 12th fret note, not the harmonic, the actual fretted note, and then you play the open string. This open string in the case of G is eight cents flat in comparison to that fretted 12th fret note. This is the compensation that we're going to need. The B is four flat and the high E is two so it just needs to be touched just barely. This is the cutter that I use to cut those values. I do that freehand before I glue that into place. Now I'm getting ready to cut those final values, so I've got a little protector strip of the brass just ahead of the compensated nut. I'm going to feed that through and then tape that into place. 
remember when we talked about those values, the low E string was four cents flat. Well, right now it's a couple of cents sharp, right? Because we've moved that, we moved the focal point ahead of the actual nut bed onto that brass. So what I'm doing now is I'm I'm cutting back that leading edge just a little bit. So I'll get my uh, get my little Dremel tool with the cutter. I want to go nice and easy here, and not taking a lot off, just a little bit. Now I'll check that sixth string again. Like I've mentioned before in other videos, I don't death grip it. Nice easy touch. I'm using the fine tuners on the bridge to dial that right in. And open. And that still needs to come back just a little tiny bit, but this time I'm doing it by hand. A couple of little strokes by hand with this file. I think that's going to do it. And that could actually come down a little bit too, so I'm going to open that up. That's it. So I'm going to check the A string now. So this is the A string 12 fret, fretted note. And I'm tuning, I'm tuning that note with the tuner. And that is pretty well perfect. So I'm going to file that to its final, final height now. Still a little tiny bit sharp. So, so once again, I'm going to go really easy with the uh, with this cutter, just bringing it back, just breezing it a little tiny bit. Ooh, and that's it. That one's done. Okay, D string. And open string. That looks pretty close right out of the gate. So I'm going to file that now for its final depth and then I'll check it in. Oh man, that is just ever so slightly flat. I'm just going to use this little slip of 600 grit paper and just polish that slot. I think we we got it down to the depth we want for the locking for the locking nut bed. Just polishing it up a little bit. So let's check that again. Our D. Well, that's it. Okay, fret a 12 fret G note. and open. And that is perfect right where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that down to its final height. I think I'll just do the uh, sandpaper trick on this one too because it's so close right out of the gate. That... Let's just see here. Let's check that again. So I'm going to file that now to its final depth. So hit that one with a 17 thou. That'll be it for the third string. And that is perfect right where it is. Again, we'll just do the final depth and polish that slot and we'll be good. Not enough to warrant going at it with a Dremel. I'm just gonna just coax that ledge back just ever so slightly. And that should do it. That's done. Perfect.
So that we can bring down to its final height. And here we go, we are on the home stretch. That's our little slip of brass that we had underneath there so we don't mar the fingerboard. So it's often the case that you got to do a little bit of re-engineering to really take care of some of the issues and this is definitely one of those cases. So what I'm doing here is I've got that locking nut bed. Well, you know something? It's too high. So all those first fret notes are way too sharp. So I need to bring it down. So I've got a couple of things here to show you. I have a U-channel, aluminum U-channel with a slip of two-sided tape and some sandpaper on there to just kind of hold this into place. Now my desk sander is actually on a foot switch so I can kind of turn it on and off. So I'm kind of holding that in tight and bit by bit we're going to thin the bottom side of that locking nut bed down so that we get that open string action where we need it and get rid of the sharpness in the first couple of frets.
I'll, I'll go through this sequence on this guitar. So there's our A string. And now D string. Okay, here's the G. And first fret. Here's the B. And lastly, the high E. Okay, we're going to go stem to stern on this guitar. I'm going to give you a rundown of exactly what we did, what I needed to do to get this guitar to behave 100% and to intonate and play as smooth and accurate as it does right now. So initially, Tom had dropped the guitar off because he, he had put a pick guard on it and uh, he wasn't real happy with the design of the pick guard. So kind of redesigned a black, white, black engraving stock pick guard. So that was the initial thrust of why he brought me the guitar. Of course, I've already set up three other guitars for him, and he thought, well, while it's here, he might as well get it set up. First issue I came across was the bridge was as low as it could go, and the action was still too high. So in order to remedy that, the neck was removed. I shimmed the neck on this end to tilt it back like so, so that these pivot posts for the bridge lifted up off of the body and gave us all of the adjustment that we need to put the action wherever we choose. So of course the pickups were raised up and the springs in the back, we went with three springs like a Strat, so this is a 25 and a half inch scale and we've got that we've got that perfectly balanced now. All of these saddles needed to be intonated. We've got the action where we want it, we've got the lay of the neck where we want it. Because Tom has already got three other guitars with compensated nuts, he gave me the green light on doing a compensated nut on this one. But it's a completely different challenge. Let me bring you in for a look. So initially, uh, Tom just assumed, well, you can't intonate it because it's got a locking nut. So I went on to explain to him that, yes, you can actually intonate a locking nut. And I have a full tutorial on my Patreon channel on exactly how I do this. But the basic gist of it is, there's a slip of brass just ahead of the locking nut bed. And that allows us to actually locate the intonation values for all six strings all the way across on this guitar. So this is 10 to 46 strings, concert pitch, 25 and a half inch scale. Essentially, the Ibanez version of a Strat. Now, of course, it's got the floating tremolo, which is ultra sensitive, as you saw. So it was quite a job. I mean, this was like a full day's work. And when we lock that down, this guitar plays perfectly in tune. 
Well, for any of you who have watched my channel, you know that I'm quick to give credit when credit is due. The idea of putting the ball ends on the machine head end for this type of bridge system where you have to cut off the string and basically clamp it into place. This idea was not mine. It was actually one of my former students, uh, Nick Lobotovich, who's gone on to be a fantastic studio engineer in Toronto. He took my level one course, my level two course, and bought his tech deck, and he came into class with his guitar strung up like this. I thought, you know something? That makes way too much sense. So thanks for that tip, Nick. Still using it to this day. Oh, and the final analysis, this is what we've got, a perfectly balanced floating tremolo system, a custom pick guard, and the action intonation and lay of the neck set up, and a compensated locking nut. And now this guitar is good to go for the long haul. Cheers.